What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What is good? I'm drinking Yingling out of a Revelry Brewery koozie, so still representing the guys. But it in. I'm drinking a Revelry beer. He's got the real pleasure. deal. Jay Wayne's got the real deal. Filtered water. Well, I'm your host, Casey Myers. As per usual, got the tripod here. What's good, fellas? How you doing? We'll start with Jay Wayne. Man, 2021 sucks. That's all I have to say. It's basically uh, 2020 2.0, if you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I mean, they almost, took Dre from, they almost took Dre from us. They almost took Dre from us. <laughs> he made it right. He said, he said he's back and doing okay, but I don't, I, I feel like you might not ever be the same after that. I don't know. Even I'm not trying to lose Dre. Mm-mm. Wait, Dre's? Um, Something's up with Dre? Bumping. You didn't know about Dr. Dre? Oh, breaking news for Jay Wayne. <laughs> I thought, that's, I thought that's why you thought 2021 was terrible. No, because fantasy football and college football. And I mean, oh, yeah, Clemson, good. Clemson lost. I forgot that you're upset about that. <laughs> and Trevor lost to Heisman, which he wasn't going to get anyway. Stupid yeah. COVID. But they should have gave it to him. There wouldn't even been a football season because he's all hashtag. We want to play and stuff. Blame the mustache. All right. That yeah, thing was that awful. Thing did not help. That, the only that, thing good. That, that has to knock him down. First of all, Fields beat him straight up. That knocks him down to number two. Mustache also knocks him down and keeps him at two. So problem solved there just there's your analysis don't you have to do that whole thing all all year long <laughs> Arm velocity means nothing when you have an ugly mustache i mean uh, that thing is was like translucent you had to like catch it in the right light to see it <laughs> did y'all see when the the, the 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 reporter wasn't on mute on the zoom yeah, call and yeah, talk shit yeah. about it and he was just like mid train of thought like oh the mustache is terrible he's got to cut it <laughs> <laughs> oh man i agree it's not it's not very it would have been funnier if she was like I, I that's how my mustache would look too <laughs> if i grew it that's why i don't grow mustaches you know like yeah it would have been funnier if they were if she was like i don't know what's up with this chick she needs to shave her mustache <laughs> <laughs> hey he's a manly man um the only thing good about 2021 is adam gaze, manly. <laughs> adam gaze is finally fired the Gase era has ended. Life after Gase has begun. We're a few days in. Yeah, buy all the Jets. Buy all the Thunder Jets. Are, the stock's going Marcus. straight up. Right. Yeah. E- like, everyone from Tannehill to Parker to Kenyon Drake to whoever the hell else was on that team, all stock went up after Gase. <laughs> now the Dolphins are trying to bring it back. They're interviewing him. No, they are not. Yes, they are. Yeah, well, there's not a more coordinator face in the in the in the whole. I don't even no. want that guy touching my offense. Why would you bring him back? He needs to go back to high school or college for a year. You've gotten him. You've gotten better since he left. In <laughs> so all facets better. of the game, he almost made the damn playoffs. Like so much better. You look up. You look up coordinator face in the dictionary. And it's and it's, it's Adam Gase in there being like no doubt. Big Co, how you doing? As he sips his water, terrible timing there. <laughs> and I, you made me spill it. You made me spill it. <laughs> I feel like the, the tower just got buzzed by a Maverick and Top Gun. I want some God. butts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, God, that's twice. That's twice. We, got, <laughs> we got Cobra Kai season three. Not, oh. I'm not as into it as I was. What? Well, I mean, the, the way season two ended was so devastating that, I mean. It's the cheesiest, worst show ever, but I can't stop watching it. It's oh, so it's horribly so, good. It's so good. I haven't seen any, any of it. Oh, it's right up your alley. I feel like you would love it. It's I don't like, have time to love it right now. It's their 30 minute episodes, real quick. Yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. They finally brought back Danielson. They said it like a million times, episode two or three. So I can't once, once, one. once he was in, once he was in Japan, that was yeah. Over. It was Danielson. Daniel everybody's calling him Danielson. Danielson. <laughs> so will my name be like Jason son, or am I just Jason? <laughs> maybe I don't know. Jay. I need to go to Japan. I never. Maybe it's maybe it's Jason. Jason, wow. I think it's, I think it's, <laughs> we really just got somewhere. I'm not gonna lie, Jason, we got somewhere. All right, All what right. are we doing here today? What are we doing here today? Well, I was perusing some um, ADP, and I clicked. I was on DLF. That's my go-to currently for ADP, and been for a while. I'm sure there's some other people. We in season and off season, we conduct our own amongst the um, 
pleasure, patrons and stuff Chester. and get uh, get that rolling to give us a better idea. But we do, you know, kind of default to the DLF ADP, and I just happened to click on Giovanni Bernard's picture. I'm going to throw it you, up. <laughs> are you going to throw it up? Oh, okay, for sure. Say, do yourself a favor and find this. This man is out here looking like the third Giovanni. long-lost member of the Mario Brothers. Like, he's hey, a Gio. Gio. <laughs> he's a Giovanni. <laughs> I te- Casey texted me a picture of this, and I was like, "Wait, did you did you scribble that on, or is that for real? Like, that doesn't even look real. That thing is it's serious." Geo. Still, mostly jealous that I can't grow a mustache. So, shout out to you, Geo. That thing looking strong. Also, didn't realize that Geo was twenty nine, and then I had to go back, and I was like, "Who? I couldn't remember who was the Bengals running back." For one year out of LSU, that absolutely crushed it. I know he was a big co. That was your guy there for a second. What was his name? Oh, what was his name? I couldn't remember either. I didn't Jeremy look it Hill. up. Jeremy, Jeremy Hill. Hill. Jer- Jeremy Hill. Was it Jeremy Hill? Oh, of course sure. it was. That yeah. was my boy. Yeah. He killed it. And then I had to, I had to think back, and I was like, man, Jeremy Hill was a long time ago, and he was there with the with Gio and and whatnot. Gio's 29? 29, yeah. Like, you, can't, you can't grow a mustache like that until you're at mm-hmm. really close to approaching 30, at least. I'm 33. I can't do that shit. But, like – uh I thought I I got the hucklebuck from Big Co because that was like when I first met Big Co, and it was like all of a sudden Jeremy Hill was killing it, and Big Co had him on like every team, and I was like, wow, this dude's like a genius. How did he know about Jeremy Hill being <laughs> the best ever? His team's gonna be so good. He's got Jeremy Hill and Eddie Lacy. I think is what he had. I was like, oh shit, he's about to murder for years. <laughs> for years. <laughs> and then like the it lasted next one year. year. It was <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eddie Lacy started listening to Jimmy Buffett. It was just cheeseburgers in paradise out the yin yang. Eddie Lacy thickened Eddie. up. Eddie Lacy thickened up on me. Lettuce and tomato. Heinz 57. And yeah, I think better uh, is if you had Trent Richardson on that same team. Be like, oh, shit, it's over. I didn't have Trent. <laughs> He's about to start three studs every week. <laughs> <laughs> but that year, though. That Jeremy one year, Hill. though. Jeremy that Hill. One year, though. Got him for a dollar. All right. So we are going to start with just like a little bit of reflection looking back. Some maybe some bad trades or uh, somebody you got wrong. So wh- who wants to kick that off? I'll, I'll, I'll start with one. Um, we talked about Chubb maybe like week two, whether or not you should be concerned about it because Kareem Hunt was eating into that workload a good bit and Kareem Hunt crushed it. Uh, they have a good thing going there, but I said I was, you know, slightly concerned about Chubb. No reason to be concerned about Chubb, dudes. Dudes, the man. And I've always been a big Chubb guy, so I don't know why I let it get in my way. And then James Robinson early. I was, you know, I me and B- Big Co made it, picked him up, made a trade for him, traded a second and Fant. Now that's probably too cheap for, you know, what James Robinson's worth. And it was like, oh yeah, you got to do that all day. And we came on here early, but. I will say we rebounded quite quickly after watching a couple of games of him (laughs) being good and saying, hey, you need to keep this guy. This guy's a league winner, and you'll still be able to sell him after the year. Um, So got got it wrong to start with, but quickly pivoted, and that's what it's about. Um, (laughs) Well, didn't didn't love Austin Eckler at his draft spot last year. Uh, How could you know that Herbert was going to come in and just be awesome, and now you want Eckler if you can get him. Crushing. Definitely, Definitely want some. Want we'll some Eckler, uh, especially with the way his contract's set up for the next couple of years, right? Yeah, and I mean, the, in my opinion, the Chargers. I mean, they're out, they're out there interviewing a bunch of DCs and the and the clapper. Uh, what's his? What's they're bringing his in from, Jason uh, Garrett for an interview. Like, just keep interview Anthony Gaines. Lynn. What are you doing? Well, I I, I went back what? and looked at some at some uh, some stats, and they've they've always they've they had a good offense with with. Uh, Garrett around, and he really like maybe he just caught a little bit of a bad rap. I'm not saying that they should hire Garrett. I, I I think they should go with Joe Brady, who just had three receivers, I think over a thousand yards in a Carolina offense. That nah, Houston's way, getting Joe Brady. Way right, over. Let's go, te- let's go Texans. Way overperformed. Be enemy, or they should get uh, Dayball. Like you need to go all in on offense and just surround Herbert with great offensive minds, and then get a good young or, or maybe just get an old school DC to, to coach your defense up a little bit. So you have a wisdom guy like McVay had uh, Wade Phillips there for a little while, then transitioned to a young guy. Wade got a little stale and now they got one of the best hottest uh, young defensive coaches in the league. 
What what LA. what the what the Chargers need is a damn witch doctor because if they could just have like guys healthy, they could. <laughs> they need to find out who's ever got their voodoo doll and tell right. them to knock that shit off. Yeah, you need to let Jerry James go. It. You need to let Bowie, yeah. Joey Bosa go. You need to let Melvin Ingram go. Like you need to let all these boys go and just let them fucking play. Yeah, and, uh, James. Yeah, could be awesome. But all right, who's next? Oh, I got a bad trade. Bad trade, real quick with me. I traded Leonard Fournette like a week before traded for Leonard Fournette like a week before he got released. And then it was just a travesty for the rest of the season. Um, I would say I would take the L on that and be like, ah, that was a bad call. But if, if you would have just thrown the the theory behind getting Leonard Fournette and seeing what James Robinson's workload was like, if you would have thrown Leonard Fournette in that workload situation, he would have been the top 10 running back. I'm pretty sure of it. He was the year before. So kind of wrong. But it was just a huge bummer. Uh, <laughs> couldn't recover from that. So, and now I he's like, like 100 ADP. So, lost the value on that. Although old. another silver lining. No, he's like 100 ADP. But another he's like silver lining though. Old. That 26. trade. That trade kept me from taking Jerry Judy and bumped me back to the 10 spot where I took Antonio Gibson. So, a little bit of silver lining in that. Uh, in that bad deal. You weren't gonna. You weren't gonna select Jerry Judy. You I probably traded, wasn't. You were going to trade I back. I would have probably traded back again because I don't really, didn't really need receivers on that team. True. Uh, but I, I wouldn't have taken Antonio Gibson outside of the spot where I took him. So if I would have had to make it all the way back there, and well, I was thinking it was one ten. So sure. All right, who's next? I'll throw a good one out there. All right. Um, I took a couple swings on Tyler Higby. Um just based obviously we know what he did for that four or five game stretch last year and what i was saying was if we could just get 75 percent of that it's a top five tight end 100 percent of that was the best stretch of tight end history like nobody's ever put that those types of stats up for four or five weeks in a row consecutive um so yes it could what you know Oh, there was a Evan Silva was making this big deal about he's had 55 career games. He was did nothing. He had five games at the end of the season, best tight end ever. Which one do you believe in? And it's just like, sure. I don't. I've the, I the opportunity if the if the Rams said, hey, that's when they were playing their best ball. I was trying to logically, you know, talk my way into this. Like, all right, well, that's where the Rams started winning. They were throwing it to Higby. Um, maybe he doesn't. They're they don't all the wide receivers won't be hurt, so they don't have to give him that type of targets. But it, I mean, they saw that it worked, and golf had a, was you know getting more comfortable and getting more confident. And it's like, all right, well, three quarters of what he was doing is a top five tight end. I can buy him at tight end eight, tight end nine, whatever. Of course, that's not tight end twenty five price like you had to pay the year before. But I can buy him at tight end eight, and and if he just comes out ball and I got, I mean, it's uh, you you got to get tight end points to win these days um, to win the championship. And it's just like nothing. No, I mean, he had a three touchdown game. Yeah, he had one of that, spots. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> nothing. So that was a, that was a big miss. Um, it's you know it sucks. Was it wasn't super take, costly right. where you ended up having to take him really? But there was probably a couple of times where you went a round or two here's, early where here, you could have added a better depth piece. Here, it, well, here's the thing that always we've every single person. Has in the history of dynasty football has done this, and this is one of my favorite parts. So you can drive yourself crazy with it because it's not, it's not how it works. You go back and look at that draft board, mm -hmm. right? You're like, all right, I took Tyler Higby here. I could have taken insert rookie here that exploded, and you would have never taken him there anyway. You know, yeah, I could have right. taken this person. I could have taken that person, but you weren't going to take that person there. You did. It, it's that just that wasn't going to happen anyway. So there, yeah, and this when the one startup where I took Higby. I probably could have. There was two or three. Like Ayuk was definitely on the board, um, but but I think even I want to say Justin Jefferson's on the tip of my tongue. I want to say, but because it was a tight end premium league, so the tight ends were bumped up. Uh, I want to say Jefferson may or may not. No, no, that's right. He wouldn't have round ahead of that. But it was some a couple play. Like T Higgins was definitely on the board. Some of those guys that have really bolstered Blossomed. their value. Yeah. You know, big time. And I, I Boy. stuck with a tight end that didn't do anything. Should definitely hey, take a T. Higgins. Oh, man. Uh, let's see here. Where do you start? 
Yeah. <laughs> made a terrible yeah, trade at the beginning yeah, yeah. of the season for uh, Odell Beckham. I traded Debo Samuel and I believe like a late first, which could have been like somebody like T. Higgins or something like that. So uh, that definitely didn't work out. I did happen to win the championship in that league where I traded for Odell. Also had Christian McCaffrey on that team. So I don't know how I pulled that shit off, but I just mm, crushed at you. all year long. Uh, you just won wanted the to points, bring that up for a humble brag. Won the points lead and the championship in that one. Anyway, and that's with other podcasters. They should, 16 people, they should be figuring it out better than that. <laughs> Can't be losing these top studs and still being able to crush. Anyway, uh, fuck that up. Traded for Julio in another league towards the end of the season. And then, like, like the week I fucking traded for him, his foot well, broke not, off. And then they I don't think, shut yeah. it down. I don't think injuries can come into this conversation. That, that's not a bad trade, what you did. It's, you just didn't play. That's, yeah. that's not a bad trade. That's, that's bad luck. I mean, it worked out bad. bad. Um, well, I yeah, mean, well, the I'm same saying. thing for Odell then. I mean, too, he got hurt and was out, sure. you know. Um, yeah. So, what do you, what DJ do you end Moore up? would be another guy that I, I kind of messed up on. I overdrafted him for sure and redraft, thought he was going to crush. Um, didn't really – I mean, if you bought him in Dynasty where you had to pay for him, it didn't work out, and he's lost value. Um, I get that he still is a good Dynasty asset. For sure. But it didn't It didn't work out like you thought it would. For yeah. Like I thought it would anyway. <clears throat> so. Yeah. I think we were talking off air. I think we talked a little bit about digs. For some reason, it didn't seem like any of us were really hot and heavy on telling you to go get digs. And I think we were all we kind of We have been in the past. You know, right, we, right. If you've listened to oh. us for years, you've had digs. I heard of saying cheap. his name. But yeah, yeah, but but th- I think we were all kind of a little worried about, that, and we all do like Josh. At like, didn't weren't like outgoing like, oh, Josh Allen's going to be the best quarterback in the league next I mean, year. But we're like, pretty we weren't like hating on the Josh Allen. We weren't hating on him, but it's like there was some inaccuracies, and then you got Diggs going to Minnesota, and it was cold, and it's like, well, we, maybe he misses a been, couple of shots to him, and you're mad, and then he's mad at homeboy, and he had a bad attitude sometimes. It seemed like, but we've but, always man, been like, in Josh Allen. I, I will corner, say though. Yeah, redraft, redraft. I ended up with some digs. At any dynasty startup, I have no idea why I didn't end up with Stefan Diggs. Let me, yeah, I mean, those two things didn't. I was definitely down on Diggs going to Buffalo. Meanwhile, like Jay said, any chance I've ever got a chance to say that Josh Allen was my dog, he's been my dog. I've been propping him up since day one. Well, day two. I wasn't a day one Josh Allen guy, but it only took me like three like, games of him being on my fantasy team. I picked him up for a couple of dollars in multiple FFPC leagues, and I was like, "That's my guy." Didn't pay nothing for him, and then I got White Cam. But um, I didn't. I didn't. I I was down on Diggs going there for Diggs. Obviously for Allen, I, I don't think I definitely couldn't. There's no reason not to love that from the get go for Allen, but for Diggs, I don't think I ever said that was a positive. Mm-hmm. And it was a big positive. Yeah, I mean, you didn't know how he's going to react to playing in the cold, even though he was in Minnesota. That's still a dome. And he didn't, you know, go there as a free agent. He got traded, and he is a bit of a diva. And he doesn't seem like he really cares about winning as long as he's getting targeted. That's all that matters. And But that attitude know, was looking right this year, though. Well, he was getting mad targets and crushing it. So, Man, yeah, well, that attitude is going to be maybe, fucking phenomenal if that's the case. Maybe drunk Zimmer is abusive, and he just he just he was just he was just always the rag doll for drunk Zimmer. Zimmer's a drunk. No, oh, he's got the red face. He looks the like red, he just crushes red whiskey and goes and hunting. He's hot. <laughs> Body's exuding heat. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel warm, but you're really losing heat. Yeah. All right. Um, That's how you catch cold, kids. Obviously. Um, we were we things that we that we liked and got right and stuck with. I'm 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 going Jonathan Taylor. We did a rookie redraft the other day. We I've, I've we've talked about it on uh, pleasure uh, pleasure chess live shows of guys. You know, of course, everybody wanted to know about it, and it was always I'm fucking sticking with Jonathan Taylor. This dude's a stud, and lo and behold, he's probably going to be a top five pick next year. I would assume by the time things shake out. So excited about that, and our boy David Montgomery, a show favorite out there just crushing at the end of the year was a league winner for you. Uh, so excited to see that happen. And the haters are going to say, well, the schedule is easy. Well, whatever. Like the bears were playing, but like it's amazing when there's like some semblance of an offensive line blocking for him all of a sudden. And he's not having to thwart off 50 different things going wrong behind the line of scrimmage. I will say the one thing that I did, you know, said could be an issue for him is he does try to do too much. And certainly his rookie year that came out and he was, looking like he was doing too much this year when he was at the end of the year when he was getting a little bit of blocking help he looked fucking so nasty 
and was absolutely a league winner. So I'm excited for that. Now, I think Nagy's probably coming back with this playoff run here, and maybe they bring Maserati Mitch back. But uh, Zilch yeah. out of Anthony Miller hurts. It does. And I guess we could put that in the wrong that category. Not, not necessarily for, sure. for this year, but I still think there's some talent there. I just like that. Just the bear situation has been so bad. And the, this back half of the season, once seemingly like Bill Lazor took over some play calling, it just seemed like they just, they stopped trying to do all the silly shit that Nagy was always trying to get in his own way of doing and just kind of got back to doing some basic shit and just not letting things get too far ahead of them and, and, focusing on just doing a few things and it seemed like it was a whole lot better for the bears oh it was a whole lot better anybody got some other things they're excited that they got right on excited that they got right on i just figured it was the opposite wasn't prepared for all the ways i was right this season (laughs) because i'd had a slew i had a list i'd have gone back and listened to some shit uh i feel good about you know i went to bat for DeAndre Swift over Cam Akers, although Cam Akers came on at the end and made you feel good about the stock that you invested in him. I know we had some debates about that. Weren't so hot on Antonio Gibson, though. Well, if we could get to the next category, okay, and then I could, uh, <laughs> I could, I could pay dues. Uh, I and I already have paid dues to Antonio Gibson when we did our re-rookie mock you did. draft. You did. Uh, Cleaned it I, up. I made amends. And it wasn't like I was down on Antonio Gibson. I just didn't want to spend a first-round pick on him, and that was a mistake. All right. All right. Well, Big Co, you got something that you got that you're proud of? I mean, I'm glad I was on the yoke train very early. Um, you are. I, I'm glad that I was picked up Logan Thomas on all the uh, waiver wires. Mm. As he mm. blossomed into a, a point getting tight end. Sure, uh, it looks did, good too. He wasn't on any of y'all's waiver wires because I bought him early. Ooh, I got a good one that I was right about. Keyshawn Vaughn, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Keyshawn Vaughn, suck it. And I'm buying Keyshawn Vaughn this year. Holler at your boy. Well, we should have traded for Curtis Samuel. I'm so sure glad we have Keyshawn I, Vaughn. On I told squad. I told Big Co about that, and I was like, you know, I was I guess I'll take take a wrong on that. Me and Jay Wayne had a team end end of the second round. Keyshawn Vaughn was available. I was like, hey, let's just Someone take offers Vaughn. Curtis Samuel. They were like, hey, he didn't offer Curtis us Curtis Samuel. Samuel and we've been it was a third picked. rounder, I think. No, nah, it was the end. It was like two eleven or two twelve. <laughs> yeah, um, two eleven. Yeah, we, it's we all got that second. Different. We got second then we yeah. But we had Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore, and I was like, "Man, I don't. I, we can't have three. Sure Panthers as hell, don't receivers. want Keyshawn Vaughn. But I, 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 I like Keyshawn Vaughn coming into this year. So, uh, you no, know, I like no, Rojo coming into this year. No Lenny Fournette this year. It was right about Rojo. Suck it. That's another Keyshawn. Right. I think Keyshawn will have a. Uh, I think Keyshawn will we'll, we'll get in the tree of trust and and have a nice year this coming next year. So will Rojo. He's already there, baby. Was right about Rojo. Suck it, haters. A lot of Rojo haters. They're Where's that guy on the Keyshawn Vaughn match. video where he was like, I'll bet you that um, Keyshawn Vaughn. Yeah, whatever he bet you, he owes you. Um, he just has to admit that he hates Rojo. That was all I wanted him to do, and he didn't want to do it. And I was like, all right, well, well if, if Keyshawn Vaughn scores more points, I'll put out a video about how awesome Keyshawn Vaughn is. But if Rojo scores more points, then you admit that you hate Rojo. And he was yeah, like, Dude. it was, wasn't about hating Vaughn. It was, oh, there's a whole video explaining it. So anyway, just overvalued. Um, he just wasn't worth that first round pick that people wanted to put on him all of a sudden because he was Tom Brady's James White. It's like, mm. yeah. all right. So how about a player that made you a believer this year? And I, I'm, I'm going to start off. I'm going Calvin Ridley. Um, Calvin Good. Ridley was, was a guy that I, couldn't pull the trigger on. I didn't dislike him. I never was like, oh, a BMI, and I'm blah, blah, blah. What about his broad jump? And Dude, blah, we, blah, went to, like, we went to bat for him as a rookie coming out. Like, he was one of our favorite rookie wide receivers. Wiry strong, fucking filthy route runner, just goes up and makes plays, good character. It was always, always too pricey for me to pallet, and now I'm in. Like, Ridley was the overall 21 player in PPR, 270 points through week 16. Fifth wide receiver overall, 19.4 games uh, points per game through week 16. That's good for four. Uh, just What's so impressive over, about him is he doesn't need Julio. 
Exactly. Know? There's what he proved to me is that he doesn't need anything. Like he's fucking dirty. Like I don't know. Outside of like the first round, back of the second, third round, I'm probably into Calvin Ridley all of a sudden. Where I didn't think I would ever say that before. But I'm, he made me a believer, man. He's for real. And he takes all that BMI talk and all that bullshit. Like, he's been nicked up here and there, played pretty much every game. I think that was might have only been 15 games this year. He might have missed a game. And he still did that shit. Um, so, any of you Devontae Smith haters out there with your BMIs and, you know, Robbie Anderson's out there looking like the wind could blow him sideways and he's crushing. So, just mm-hmm. stop it. It's not, it's not the same game that it used to be. They can't crush you over the middle. They're not right. super physical with you. Like, stop it. And then we're going to – go with the fucking breakout age of Devonte Smith too. Like, oh, gee, well, that'll be a whole nother argument. Um, anyway, any, who made you guys a believer this year? We'll start with big co who you got. Uh, I mean, for me, I was, I jumped in you and I both a couple times on our league in our F, uh, FFPC leagues and scooped up, um, miles Gaskin on the cheap and, uh, uh, completely not at the level of Calvin Ridley, of course, as far as dynasty value, but for a super cheap guy that wasn't, uh, it was a short bench, you know, FFPC short bench on the yeah, waivers. Was that 20, 20 players? Yeah. On so, FFPC? yeah. So, like, it's with a not, minus two. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so it's one of those things where it's not like a true deep dynasty league where you could just scoop him up. But I mean, he, I, nobody was talking about Miles Gaskin coming into this year at all. And uh, so that was, that's, that was nice to see. Are you oh, so I, I like that pick. Is that are we holding Mike Miles Gaskin leading in the next season? Are we gambling? I personally don't see don't why not. Like, you're not going to get enough up. for him to make it worth it. I guess if somebody offered you a second, would you take it for Gaskin? If it was an early second with this class, probably and because you're basically just going to flip that coin and say, I'm not sure if Miami's going to put enough draft stock into somebody that could come just boot him backwards and it doesn't know. seem like there's that many running backs like there was this year there is like there are it doesn't the ta- the talent is top heavy and it's great up at the top but it doesn't i mean very Good early point. into any of that type of analysis yeah but. and i think i mean you think about the different ways that miami was winning miles gaskin was helping out they they weren't doing a whole lot offensively when ryan mm-hmm. fitzpatrick wasn't in there he, whenever you know Tua just dump passes and just don't turn it over, play like a rookie. Yeah. And um, Miles Gaskin really, really played well. So, I mean, yeah. I, I would take an early two for him just because some of these receivers that are probably going to be at the top of the second round that were just like this year, um, really valuable, but it's still a second round rookie pick. I could see that from Gaskin, but other than that, I, I'd hold. Yeah, I mean, it was really impressive what he did as a receiver. I mean, they were lining him up out wide. He was running routes. He was catching a lot of balls, setting him up on screens. And it, it, it seemed to me like almost, you know, maybe he's kind of like a, a James White plus because he's he's pretty good as a runner. I mean, he only averaged, I think, like 4.1 yards per carry. So he's like point one better than Jag. Is that how that works? I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. But point two maybe, 3.9 Jag, 4 point. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, but not a great offensive line there. And I think a guy coming, you said James White, guy coming in Flores from that Patriots right. tree, maybe they don't want to invest in a running back. So. Right. They could get some cheap guys. And, and I'm sure they'll bring in somebody. Somebody's coming into Miami. They're not going to go into next season with just Ahmad Salvin. What's his name? Salman? Ahmed. Uh, Salman. Salvad. Yeah, I'm but I mean, that, but <laughs> hats, <laughs> hats off to those guys though. Over in Miami, like you guys brought in Brita, you brought in Howard, Howard. and then by you had Gaskin and Ahmed. Just you know, good job. Hats off to you guys for those were throwaways. By but other teams had opportunities at Gaskin the year before. The Niners had seventh Ahmed round on their pick. roster in the uh, in in the off in the early off season, and then they ended up cutting him, bringing Hasty back, and and the Dolphins picked up. Uh, Ahmed and he looked good too, man. That 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 was the old uh, Washington Huskies combo platter. So that's off to them. Absolutely. Uh, let's see a player. Right, Jay that, Wayne, who you got? Player that that uh, made you a believer. I mean, besides Antonio Gibson, you know, we we talked about him for a second. I mean, not that I, I mean, I didn't believe that he would do what he did, and then when you saw him do what he does when he's doing it, it's. It's awesome. Uh, Deontay Johnson is another guy we made amends with earlier uh, in the year on the show as being a guy we kind of slept on and missed out on and then all of a sudden believed, like, 
it was evident that that dude's good. And then, you know, we told you to chase him and then his value dipped a little bit with injuries and chase Claypool coming on, which that's another guy that uh, definitely turned me into a believer. I wasn't super high on him coming in, missed that, messed that one up. And he looks like a beast out there. Um, and, and I think with him not just crushing it at the end of the year, still a little bit of time to get in on chase Claypool. Whereas for a second there, it looked like he might be unattainable, but now he's like semi attainable. Um, I'm into that. Justin Herbert was another guy I had question marks about. He's obviously a stud. Um, I like that you brought up miles Gaskin, big co. Um, and then, you know, you already brought up David Montgomery, but it's not so much for me. It's just for you guys. Like y'all should be believers in David Montgomery. Now, if you weren't before and, uh, if well, he scored more points him. than Miles Sanders, so he's got to be better than him. Like, that's just how this works, right? Yeah. So that's who I got. All right. Good stuff, fellas. Good stuff. Um, let's move to another topic that's that I think is a little interesting here. Um, we're going to – I'll phrase it this way. We'll go with some high-end running backs that are coming into a midlife crisis, uh, and you're in a little bit of a quandary with them. And, you know, that there seems to be – most of the top guys in dynasty drafts right now are kind of in that realm. And now Simmons is a, old. Yeah, should have been out of game years ago, but he can't go home because he hates his wife. <laughs> um, You've seen her at the Christmas party. She's the one that gets plastered and calls him a <laughs> retard. <laughs> um, so Back before, I, I, that obviously, wasn't politically incorrect. <laughs> we got enough. We got enough influx of some young talent this year, but a lot of the stalwarts and uh, and good good guys that have been holding it down here for a couple of years, the Kamaras, the Dalvins, the Zeeks, the Henrys. All over 26. Uh, all over 26, going into second contracts or just got paid. Aaron Jones is in that mix. Free agent uh, still. On Eckler, all those kind of guys. I just wanted to have a conversation. It's the, the age-old dynasty uh, conversation, and a lot of organizations out there uh, will tell you that this is when you got to sell – that you got you to sell these running backs off because they're – in their second contract and they're past the, the 26 mark or whatever. So, you know, sell them, get what you can and, and, you know, just keep restocking the cupboard. So let's have yeah, a little conversation age, about those guys. The old age conversation about the age old conversation about old age. Right. Midlife crisis. I, a lot of them probably just off that new contract went and bought a red sports car. So, yeah, that's uh, definitely a running back midlife crisis. I mean, you're at the end of the road at 26. I mean, you left for dead. It's Might as well throw him in the trash. End of the road. Uh, I always like when Casey men. sings. I wish I had as I wish I had a a passable singing voice so that, <laughs> so that I could sing. But my voice is so bad that I just don't sing unless the <laughs> it's music like your mustache growing turned up. Right, I just shave it every day. I just don't sing, <laughs> especially so on what the mic. And I thought this was a little interesting because you have kind of we've said this a bunch of times, but you have Big Co who's you know, more of a wheeler and dealer. He likes to move and shake and, and, and sell things. He's in it for the thrill of the, of the hunt. He's kind of like a, an 80s song, uh, Eye of the Tiger. Um, and then you got Jay Wayne, who's, you know, he's not going to pursue too many trades. If there's a deal to be made that, that's good value, he'll make it, but he's not going to go searching it out. He kind of does his research and just settles in on his guys. And I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle there. So I think this was an interesting conversation for all of us to have. And I think I know we're pretty much, we mostly lay on all of them, but we can kind of branch it off into separate guys. If you guys feel a certain way about the group, and then maybe there's one or two outliers in that kind of group. So what do you think, Big Co? The, the Zeeks, the Dalvins, the Kamaras, the Henrys, these are all first round picks. Um, and then Aaron Jones, uh, 26 going into a second contract. What are your thoughts on on moving those guys, getting what you can, or, or riding those things out into the sunset? Are you like two more years, or what are you thinking? Well, um, it's the get what you can part that I don't really agree with. You that, know? that was probably the wrong statement. Get, still, get as much get great as you value. Can. Right, right, yeah. right. Get, get well, they done. all still hold pretty yeah. significant value. Like you said, they're first-round startup picks. Yeah, so should I mean, you try and capitalize on that value now before it gets – Somebody like Alvin and Dalvin, those two guys could get you a whole new team, right? You sell one of those guys, you get a whole new team. And I don't think there's anything wrong with going out on top. Um, I actually sold Alvin Kamara on um, in a home league this year where, you know, a lot of people 
a some people that doesn't they and that dude won league. the championship didn't he yeah he did no well, he obviously no, no he, he didn't. didn't he did oh, he, he had won Allen it, and lost. he got back awesome. he got beat by the josh allen dig stack on monday night he just that had to watch incredible. that <clears throat> lead that 72 wow. point lead evaporator whatever it was. shout that out was awesome. tj for winning that shit go ahead i had, go. To, I had to double t- it took me like two days to figure out he didn't that, that kevin didn't win i was like i saw it in the group text and i was like wait what and i had to go back and look and i was like oh crap hey does anyway. total points pay out in that league casey Mm-mm. no so uh, that with the eight man Damn. i sold alvin some people in the league were thinking that I sold him for way too much because they don't understand trade values. And some people in the league, Casey, like, what are you doing? Why didn't you call me and tell me he was, a, <laughs> you know? So it's just like, you sell a guy like that. You're going to catch it from both ends. You, I've, I've, I, I earned the one, two in the rookie draft with Alvin on my team last year, you know? So it's like, I've, I have with the injuries, I sold some older, older receivers, yada, 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 up and down. I just I, I pretty much got a king's ransom for him, and it was just basically to to entertain myself. Like Casey said, I was like, "All right, well, it was a fun trade, and we'll see what happens." Because like it's and, been a minute since I made a trade. Yeah, right. We'll just ride it out. You got any more we'll of them? Have, we just have a good. You got some more trades for me? I, I we'll just have a good time. I um, want them trade offers. I got. I mean, I got two first round picks. I got a first round pick from him this year. I got first round pick from him next year. I got Chase Claypool. I uh, got um, Gasecki, which was a you know, it's a really good. We've we've seen Gasecki play so well now. If he got a if he's got a football coming his way, he's going to catch it. He's a really good young up and coming tight end to help a team that doesn't have great tight ends and. Um, I got Marlon Mack as well. I got a second round pick. I got the third round pick. I gave up like a third round pick two years from now just because sometimes it's what you have to do in a trade to get it done. But I got a Side decent bar, amount. It's a, it's, it's a $125 league, so it's not like it's a home league that's $10. Like I know a lot of y'all dynasty analysts like to play for. Uh, but we're, we're, we're usually, if we're talking about trades and leagues, they're usually at least over 100. And here's yeah, some advice. Over two. Don't play in... Thirty-five twenty-dollar leagues play in like a couple expensive leagues. Continue, Bingo. I like that. If you got thirty, if you're in thirty ten-dollar leagues, go ahead and get you a fifty-dollar league. Splurge. No, fuck that. Sell off twenty-five of those teams. Get yourself a hundred fifty-dollar league. Yeah, something something that'll make you excited about it. But anyway, I really did it for fun. I, I've I've had a good team. I had a I won the championship the year before Alvin Kamara was a rookie. I've it's been three or four years now. Haven't won anything. I've been I've was the odds on favorite to win two years in a row. Got beat in the first round of playoffs, and then started missing the playoffs, and then I had the one two rookie picks. Like, whatever. I'm gonna have a good time here. I feel like I got a lot for him for him, but it's never enough. It wasn't enough. I could have gotten more probably if I'd have put him up for auction, but it got hammered out one night, trade got done. It is what it is. Um I would like right now we just saw Zeke go through a, the dat the 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 loss of Dak and it took a couple weeks for Andy Dalton and things get going. Um the whole team basically quit for a couple of weeks and then they kind of brought themselves yeah, back up. Playing with backup so, to backup offensive linemen in a Zeke, lot of spots. Well, that too, that too. So Zeke had a and good... And backup to backup quarterback. Zeke had a good week or two. Um, yeah, Dalton got knocked out for a couple of weeks. Zeke had a good week or two to end the season, so that was good. But right now, I wouldn't sell Zeke. I'd put him back on the field next year, hopefully with a healthy DAC. And then I, 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 I personally wouldn't sell Zeke in the offseason unless you find that person who understands what happened and they expect to get you, you, you get, get good value. I could, Dalvin Cook seems, Dalvin Cook feels younger to me. Dal, Dalvin Cook, Dalvin and Alvin feel like they're in better, better shape. Like Zeke feels like to me, he could be on a slippery slope. He's a thicker guy to begin with. And if he doesn't take, he's well, well paid. Of course, Alvin and Dalvin are too, but they're slenderer. You know, I mean, Dalvin's arms, Slender. Would, Dalvin's arms will break the windows when you walk in the front door. He's a beast, but, you know, Zeke feels like he could easily be a little bit overweight at any time. And Dalvin and Alvin don't make me feel that way. Um, yeah, and I mean, and, and if, if Dalvin and Alvin are right and getting fed properly, like, they're, I think Dalvin might be the best back in the league minus CMC maybe. And because when he's right, he's so electric and Kamara's right up there. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I agree, I guess when you were saying, uh, Zeke was crushing in the first half of the year with 
uh, Dak, Dak. So 27, 22, 17, 20, 23. Uh, those are the first couple of games with a semi okay offensive those are line top and th- the top right three, top three numbers. That'll get you top three right. all day long. And he looked and he looked good. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I probably am. I got a team that just won the championship with Zeke and Dalvin Cook, and I'm probably going to load it up again. I was I lost last year. Had that same roster. Um, lost last year in the in the last round of the playoffs and came in this year and got the W and got the win, and I'm going to probably load that bitch up again. Now, I could understand saying if Zeke would have went out and been good, I could understand maybe saying, hey, maybe I'll sell one of those two assets and reset a little bit. I just I traded for Miles Sanders week 13 in that league to just kind of bolster up because I lost Will Fuller going into that uh, with PD suspension. Fucking Will Fuller. I said I was going to get rid of It ain't one thing, Fuller. it's another. I said I could get rid of He almost fucked me again. He got me last year. That's the reason I lost the championship. He tried to get me again. I said, no, not this time, Will Fuller. I'm fucking trading for Miles Sanders to an Eagles fan who was mad at Miles Sanders, and I got Miles Sanders for a first. And it was a long, long trade, but there was it was a first and two twos. I got Mostert and Mooney and the, a, a two this year and a two next year and a first. Uh, and I traded Will Fuller in that deal as well. You got the first in Miles Sanders? No, no. I traded the first uh, a next year's two. Gotcha. Um, and, and Will Fuller. And Will Fuller, yeah. that's Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. And got back Mostert, which got injured, Miles Sanders and Mooney. I think I traded two twos, actually, um, this year and next year. But I had multiple twos going in there, so I still have twos. Um, so I could see it. But I'm mostly not on this train of saying, hey, you know, and let, it, it, obviously it comes down to roster construction. If you're struggling and you don't think that you're going to be competitive, like I got a team that's ready to load up again and roll. So I'm I'm hanging on. If, if you feel like your team's backsliding or like you were saying, Big Co, maybe you were kind of in a purgatory there, or couldn't quite get over the hump, even though maybe you made some good draft picks this year. Like I could get down with saying, hey, let me let me rebuild – and restock. I get the idea of saying, "Hey, let me rebuild and restock this team." Because, like you said, you got a ridiculous value in Claypool, who could be absolutely a number one draft pick in startups before too long, and multiple firsts, and a bunch of other guys who are fun. And I mean, he you know, could be you, DK. If, if one other guy. Of those DK is basically like fucking second in ADP right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and any one of those guys that you picked up, Marlon Mack, Gusecki, I forget who else it was, but like one of those guys could hit, and then that's a that's just ridiculous trade. Um, and Gusecki, we like you said, you've already seen some athleticism in Gusecki, and I got a whole thing on tight ends that I'll, we'll talk about either later in the show. Or and let me show. let me let me put one more layer onto it. Yeah, or just I didn't think I was going to make the playoffs. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, I just after I traded Alvin Kamara, maybe even before, I think I'd won two or three games in a row. And then after I traded him, I kept winning. I ended up in the playoffs. And uh, I was like, well, that sucks. I wish I had Alvin. But, you know, I wasn't trying to tank. But it's like if you're going to trade your best player, now you're trying to trade someone. Now I, I was trying to trade Julio. I, of course, started with the worst teams in the league. Went back a couple weeks. You know, I, I wasn't trying to do it fast. I wasn't trying to trade Julio for the person that was going to be the 110 or the 111 rookie pick. I was trying to get the one, two or the one, three rookie pick for Julio, you know? So mm-hmm. I went two weeks before I even talked to Jay Wayne and he had already picked up Julio in the other league, the other home league that we have. And I guess maybe he didn't want to double down on it. And within one week now Julio's out, you know? So if, it's, if I would have had, you know, another healthy week of Julio, I could have traded him, that kind of thing. But it was just one of those things where, you know, I did get a lot for Alvin, but you just you 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 can't get enough for somebody like that. And mm-hmm. if 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 you really want to break it down, two for like a first round pick might buy you in a startup might buy you into the seventh round. Okay, this is so because when people were one or two guys in the league did not understand how tr- real blockbuster trades go down. These are the guys that hardly make any of the trades, and if they're going to make a trade, they they're going to give you – they want you to give you them a second for their fourth-round pick straight up. Mm-hmm. Like, it just makes no sense, right? So I was trying to explain it to a guy who thought it was a bad trade for me, for the guy that got Alvin and thought he paid way too much. And I was like, well, if maybe you can get a 
seventh round pick for a first, you know, you trade a first next year in, in a startup, yes. you get seven, yourself into a seventh right. startup. Yeah. Six, like, late six, early seventh, maybe throw another first rounder on there. You go from that sixth up into the three, four. late three, early four, yeah, late three, early, early four. four. Yeah. And you throw in the guy who had a, a, a few weeks before that, Chase Claypool, we scored four or five touchdowns in the game, whatever, four touchdowns. He'd never do that again in his career more than likely. Highly unlikely he does that again. So maybe you're in the – now you're in the late mid-second and in a startup draft to go from the end of the second round to the very beginning of the front for top of the round. I mean, if, you know, of course, at this point, um, Saquon Barkley's hurt already. Christian McCaffrey's hurt already. We're into the season now. Alvin Kamara is the best – Alvin and Dalvin are the best two running backs in football. Um, so if, we, if you did a startup in the middle of the year, the first two picks would be Alvin or Dalvin, you know. So – to get there, um, Marlon Mack and Mike Kosecki in a second round pick would don't it would, it would never get you to the top of the from mm-hmm. the late from the mid early third late two to the into a, a top five draft pick. So because those those top five or six players every year, and sometimes it's two, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's eight. This year I think it's a bunch. Um, they're so valuable. You can't even get there if you don't get that luck of the draw with the random picks come out for who gets mm-hmm. who in a draft. You can't get there. So, I I was trying to explain it to somebody. You, you can't you can't buy Alvin Kamara, and if you can, good for you. You know. Yeah. And the dude, well, he didn't win the championship, but he he got second he was there place and, and he, he got should, his money. I mean, he, he really should have. Right. He was there between Diggs and Josh Allen. He got like seventy two points or something in one. And it's, so. he's been a middling team since the, since the draft ever started. Mm-hmm. He's never been terrible enough to get a you know a really good one or two draft pick, and he's never been good enough to even be in the playoffs. He's always been the one five one six every year. Yeah, trades for Dalvin and goes to the, trades for Alvin Kamara and goes to the championship. I will say for a lot of these guys, it's outside of Zeke. I like what you said. I probably you got to get Zeke back on the field unless you can catch that one guy who understands the value there and is ready to pay. I will say that you know. This heading into this season and maybe the start of the season is probably where all these guys will peak out at value, or at least Dalvin and and Kamara and those guys will, will probably you probably won't be able to get the return that you could get right this minute. Maybe going heading into next season when they're going to be twenty seven and had another season and maybe Dalvin got nicked or Kamara got nicked. You know what I mean? So sure. I, I can understand the theory of saying get rid of these guys, but for the most part. It's really hard to win without one of those top guys on your team, and it's really hard to buy one of those top guys on your team. So if your team sucks, then I get it, or you're a middling team, then I get it. But for the most part, I'm going to ride out and try to build the team around him and, and spend two more years of trying to go after this thing. Jay Wayne, how you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think – as much as I'm a, like a Zeke hater, you can't sell Zeke right now. You could buy him if you wanted to. Um, I'm not trying to sell Kamara or Dalvin Cook um, on on the teams where I have those guys. I'm trying. To, I I was in, you know, I had the points lead in the, in the one home league where I have Dalvin Cook and Aaron Jones, and the guy who won it beat me in the first week of the playoffs. I had the most points, didn't have a buy, ended up getting unlucky. Um, but I'm gonna fill that up again next year. Um, and I think I'm probably, you know, I think, I don't think there's that much question. Like you got Kamara, Dalvin, Zeke, you know, those guys, everybody knows about those guys. It's more of like, what do you, you know, what do you do with Aaron Jones? You know, he doesn't have a contract yet. Do you try to capitalize early now on how successful he has been before anything happens with his contract? Or do you like hold on? Because if he gets, if he gets a second contract with Green Bay, then you're going to wish you had not sold him. So yeah. is it worth the gamble there? To he is a little, have a little old already, 26. Oh, yeah. I mean, all these dudes, yeah, that's why we're talking about these guys because they're fucking old when it comes yeah, to – Yeah, just, it just seems like he, he hasn't – he didn't uh, crescendo to where he is in time, and those other guys have been around for a little while. I think that's why it maybe hits a little different with Aaron Jones. But I think – in my opinion, Aaron, jo- I was a little bit reluctant to take Aaron Jones where he had been in that third round for a little while in startups because I just wasn't sure. And now I feel like I don't really care what team he's on. If he gets the ball 
given to him and the opportunity, I think he's plenty good. Like he's proven to me that he's he's good I, enough. Obviously, I think it's not going to get much good, easier than being on an Aaron Rodgers team with uh, Kyle, uh, with, with Matt, Matt with the Kyle way they're Shanahan married. Call and plays. Yeah. I mean, with, well, <laughs> Matt Lafleur with, with Matt with the way they have the the run in the past married that they all kind of look the same, which is that Shanahan McVay thing going on that they've kind of you know, started to morph into, uh, I think is really, and I, I can't understand why the Packers aren't going to bring him back, you know, like let right. Jamal Williams go. You bring in, uh, AJ Dillon, AJ Dillon, and you, you sign, um, uh, you need, they, they need weapons and he's a weapon for him. I mean, so I, I Aaron just, Rogers it seems likes like, him. yeah, exactly. seems like Aaron Rodgers likes him. Um, so I'm probably holding Aaron Jones. I'm going to gamble a little bit and see if it pays off with extra value. And if he does go somewhere else, it will take a hit in value, but you're still going to be okay. It's not going to be the end of the world. Um, could take a you, hit. Could 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 remain the same, though. Uh, and right. I'm confident in Aaron Jones, Not and I wasn't before. What do you do with Derrick Henry? Do you sell him after That's the 2000 yard season? Because he's probably 27. the most He'll be interesting name on the list. He'll be 27 in January. I think maybe he just turned 27. Like the I think he just turned 27 the other day. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, Derrick Henry might be the, the the one on this list that I'd be, and I was the just like um, Aaron Jones. I was reluctant to get him in there, and then by the end of redraft uh, coming in to the season, I had talked myself into him being like one of the best guys to draft, and where well, I, as I would have normally drafted him near the end of the first round, where I had talked myself into drafting him as one of the top four or five guys because he just seems safe as hell. Well, there were guys who were now Kamar hadn't yeah, got paid yet. Right. Mason was waiting to get paid, and then like and it, with COVID. You're just like let right. me get let me get and then Henry got paid late too, but it was before those other guys. So like yeah. I missed out on on I missed out on him in Dynasty because he hadn't gotten paid yet, and I was like I don't know if they're gonna pay him or not. Yeah, and if they if I'd have known that he was gonna get paid, then like that's kind of like the Aaron Jones gamble. Like if I know he's gonna get paid, then I'll double down. I'll even pay whatever I have. To yeah, get. it's just Jones different right in the Aaron Jones game because I you know Aaron Jones is just a different type of back. Like I just feel like he doesn't need. Not that Derrick Henry needs a ton of touches, but like that was always kind of the thing to get him established was like, hey, he needed to be in that offense and get X amount of touches. Like Aaron Jones seems like he can house it and he's a really good receiver. So I, not that Derrick Henry can't be a good receiver. He's just not built like Aaron Jones is. And it's like, like you said, I had been burned by the Zeke and the Melvin holdout the year before and was was bullish on that and that didn't work out. And he just, and I didn't want to take Clyde Edwards a layer. And so he, he ended up being a safe guy. And now I feel like, at 27, he's just built different than all those other running backs. Like, And maybe it's going to end up being a positive, but right now it feels like it's going to end up being maybe a negative that, like, he's – I know the mileage thing, but I don't get caught up in mileage too much on any guys. Like, I feel like it's been proven a decent amount that it doesn't really matter all that well, much. Well, as far as how much he had in college coming in the NFL, that's been proven, but I don't know. NFL I mean, carries are different. It's just how your how whose body's going to hold up how and how much how much you love it and how much you want to do it. It just seems like Henry's whole game is predicated on being the biggest nastiest guy that nobody wants to tackle. And when when does he start to slow down a little bit where people are like, ah, he's just a bigger dude and I'm not that scared to get in his way. You know what but, I mean? But he, he I don't I don't know. He's a, ever been hurt? Ever? I don't. I'm not sure. Like, no. He, to my knowledge, he's never been hurt, and he's. Might be the fastest player on the field most times. So he wants to get going. Yeah, it's a little he, built up, he, but yeah, he he can house it at any time. So like, if he loses a step, he's still going to probably have plenty of speed for another year or two. And he's obviously still the biggest, strongest dude on the field for a year. Or two. I mean, he's only twenty seven. I mean, I the thing about it is all these guys. Let's face it, like. And he's paid, stuck I, in that I, good I workload. Swear, I swear I've been looking for the next Matt, or Matt Forte for like four years. Like, I've been looking. I've been try, I thought it was going to be this guy. I thought it was going to be that guy. I've been looking for that Matt Forte for a while now. And I don't know. One of them might be it. It might be Dalvin Cook. It might be Alvin Kamara for sure because of Marsh. his training regiment. Uh, it's just like, I don't know which one of these guys is going to play till 30. But – the the play value well till thirty the I'm play standing. well play well till thirty the the value drop is guaranteed it's, it's fast absolutely it guaranteed fast I mean just obviously there's a lot of extenuating circumstances but right the second Le'Veon Bell ain't worth 
half of what he was worth last year, and that was less than what he was worth the year before. David Johnson, I got a random first-round pick for him. Now, going into the season, I'm glad I did that. That being said, he did crush down the stretch. But the right to second, you, nobody's giving you a first-round pick for David Johnson. No. But David Johnson and those but guys are like, in, are, are like in their 30s and, and got kind of shuffled around a little bit. But I'm also like – that. that's also, I think, a good point of like – David Johnson still was very viable for most of the season because he can catch balls and do lots of different things. Like, and, and Le'Veon Bell, like, it just sucked the way that whole thing played out. It wasn't real. I think Le'Veon Bell would have been plenty good and still can ha- have a couple of good years left just catching balls. It's Derek if Le'Veon Henry Bell would have just not held out and, and got that t- $30 right. million dollars from the Steelers, he, it would be a completely different narrative yeah. on the end of his career. As Derrick Henry is in a big pass catcher and just as different than all these other running backs, which is the only, it gives me like, I respect the shit out of him. And like, I don't want to hate on him at all. I just, it seems like he, for, for whatever reason, I get the most stuck on being like, I think he would be the first one that I would say he's a, a year older than all these guys. And he'd probably be the first one that I'd be interested in getting off of just because he doesn't seem like he has that, like, Hey, we can age out into our twilights and still get me 12, 13 points a game with, with a little bit of catching and, and kind of mixed bag of getting us to those David Johnson like games that he had in um, the Texans this year. So the way David Johnson was injured. So is yeah. there anybody else on that list we hadn't talked about yet? Um, not really. I mean, Eckler is a little different than those guys, and he's not, you know, I guess he's kind of in that realm, but the, all those other guys are like bona fide first round picks and Mixon Joe Mixon he's 25 he's going to be 25 in July um he just got paid he seems fairly safe like I guess you could weigh injuries versus high tread right because he's he doesn't have a ton of tread he doesn't have a ton of lost tread on his tires but he also hasn't been hurt so I don't know how you want to balance that but it still seems like the the Bengals could be pretty good if, 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 if Joe Burrow can come back from this injury and they get healthy good coach good scheme good offensive pieces around him he's good yeah, uh, and he's be, just going to be so much his value went down he's going to be a little cheaper this year right. so I don't, I don't think he's quite in this mix like i'm buying joe mixon again so right yeah, right i mean but i, I think I, it probably I, falls I off win. there i mean you got cream hunt at 26 but he's tied with the browns for two more years and chubbs there and so he's not quite in this yeah if i need to win i'll take any of those guys over joe mixon um, yeah just because i i don't know if he's going to be on the field. Um, how do you sell these guys? Like I, when you were talking about Derrick Henry and being the beast that he is and maybe potentially being the first one you wanted to sell, I was thinking about, well, how I mean, he you... could be – Henry could be dump trucking dudes until he's 30. Like, I don't know. It just, just seems yeah, like the, probably... his game can fall off a lot. I guess that's the best way to say it. It seems like his game could fall off a lot quicker than these other guys. Well, yeah, because he's not catching passes. But the – um. If I'm if to to get out of one of these guys, you got to or you get you you. I, the only thing it's up on of, Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. We need to make sure you get enough. Don't you, we're not telling you to go trade get whatever you can get, like you pointed out. That's not the verbiage that we're trying to say here. You need to get a lot for me. It needs to be the right circumstance that your team is in for you to justify getting out from one of these guys. But I like where you're headed with this question, Nico. Well, I would be turning – I mean, I would be trying to take one of these guys. If you want to keep going towards winning now, but you be – like the only part of my problem when I, with the trade that I came out of Alvin Kamara with for my home, the home league is I, it, it was Chase Claypool, but it wasn't the running back. Exactly. You know? That's exactly what I, that, if you're going to make this trade, it's got to be for Clyde or Swift or Gibson or JT, JT or Jacob, or just, AK just, Dobbins, Dobbins, Dobbins Akers, or Robinson, Tom, Sanders, Monty. The, well, Dobbins. Monty's not quite there, but Taylor's Taylor's going to cost you as much as it. You're not getting Taylor for any of those guys except for Dalvin or Alvin Kamara. Um, and if well, I'm not if saying the, if Jacob, the is, you could put together ages, a package, if, you know. If, if the guy that has Jonathan Taylor is an ageist in dynasty football, you're not getting him for yeah. either one of those. Jake anybody on seems list. like a good target though for you could to Jacobs. trade one of those older running backs. So he's still only 23. You could go. Just I would be not going, even 23 yet. I would be February going to the 10th. Taylor guy. I'd be going to the Taylor guy first, and then I go to the Dobbins guy, and I would be starting there to go get you that 22, 23 year old guy to be just reset. If you can get Dobbins plus, like if you can get Dobbins in a first round pick. For and obviously, 
a first round pick has value. If you make the pick, it's a bad pick. That sucks. If you make the pick and it turns out to be Justin Jefferson, you crushed. So you might not actually make that first round pick. You could trade it. You could trade. Sure. If, you could use I, it as a springboard to get into something right, else I got that, a, that you like. Right, right. So I'm, I'm, if you can go get Dobbins in a first round pick for one of those running backs, then I think you're in great shape. I um, like that. It. I like the kind of, you know, I like that you circle back around and said, you know, I got Claypool and I like Claypool and some people who are ages and are the receiver guys that say, Oh, you just got to load up on receivers and then go get a good running back when it's time to win. Like, yeah, good fucking luck, man. Cause you're going to trade all your good receivers and your picks to get that good running sure. back. And then all of a sudden your team's not going to be in the shape that it was in. I exactly. fucking hate that statement of like, oh, I don't like running backs unless I'm trying to win a championship. It's like, what the fuck? It's the stupidest sounding statement ever. Yeah. Um, so I got a, a, something that I almost tangented on. I wanted to get done with that real quick. If For the, the first round draft pick value stuff for a new dynasty player, right? We're take ourselves, the three of us, we started to go back six years ago, seven years ago. First dynasty league, we're really, really digging in deep to play with, right? And one of the reasons why I spent years trading my first round pick for proven players is because you just take the wrong rookie pick and that can happen. It's happened. Uh, you, we don't have to name all the, all the, you know, bad first round rookie picks. There's too many to list. So if you're new to dynasty, just have your team trade it, but you and you're just like, all right, well, I don't know how to do that. I'm a little, I'm scared to trade to this or that. Trade it for a first round pick the next year. That way you got two picks. You got your first round pick. You just traded the first round pick this year. You're not really sure how to navigate it. You're not really sure know what to do. Yeah. There's not, you know, if you don't have the one one and you're like, all right, well, I don't know if I want to take ETN or I want to take Najee Harris after that. It gets really like there's so many wide receivers, I don't know what to do. If you trade it, if it's not an easy pick for you and you're not at the very top, you trade it till for a first round pick next year plus. You know, say you trade it from, say you got the one five, one six, one seven. You don't know what to do with it. You trade back into the second round, and you get somebody's first round pick next year. You still got a pick this year. You got your two. You got the two that you just traded for, and now you got two ones next year. Basically, you're fast for you're you're you're, you're throwing Buying yourself a little bit of time and gaining more assets. Throw that asset. More. Throw those assets in the future till you can figure yourself out and figure dynasty out. You know, instead of just being like, like three that. years from now, instead of three years from now being like, oh, I made two bad picks and my team kind of sucks. And now I need, I need a new team. And now, I if you have I'm the there. one, one or the one, two, you should make the pick probably. Cause I made that mistake early on and I could have had, or Zeke you could, and I thought or, I got the world and it wasn't enough. And I fucked up. Yeah. 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 That's what but, I meant. That's what I said. If it's not an easy yeah, pick, yeah. it's not one of these guys where anybody, if people aren't falling over themselves to make the pick, and you're in right. that one seven, one eight, one nine. You don't really know what to do with yourself. Just throw it in the future and get a little bit more with it. And then a year or two down the road, when you're like, "Oh, I figured this out. I know what I'm doing now," your team's not ruined. Yeah, I think I think that's a great point. I think that was a a good little uh, tidbit there from from Big Coast Corner. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jay Wayne got a fresh crack. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, I got to excuse myself for a bathroom break here, but you guys can carry on the conversation. Sounds I'll like back in a minute. Me, it's a wee wee. No, nah, you can't be <laughs> can't be pooping mid podcast here. Um, don't know how long you're gonna be before you come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be a quick Z, could be a long Z. You never know. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I think those are the top guys, and I think. I think, you know, there are some dynasty philosophies that are like you should never be messing with one of these running backs on their second contract and you got to always be trading for the young guy. And while there is a lot of young talent and I'm totally fine with buying into those guys, these other these older running backs like can still produce. And, you know, I wouldn't be trading these top dudes unless I was getting a, a, a haul uh, for them. And I'd, I'd mostly be trying to upgrade in some way at running back or I mean I guess you can't really upgrade from Kamara Dalvin um pretty much everybody that we just talked about is hard to upgrade from it's just how do you try to maintain the ability that they give you points in the starting lineup and just dial that clock back by two or three years so that's why if you can go 
sure, if you go from Dalvin Cook to J.K. Dobbins, that does not feel great today. But if you go, you know, if you take Dalvin Cook and go to J.K. Dobbins, get you a first round pick and some like a Tyler Boyd or somebody that can go in your start, fill a gap for you, get you a first round pick next year as well. And you got a budding star in J.K. Dobbins. It'll never be enough to get a Dalvin Cook. Um, but it, that's, that's just the game. You have to play enough seasons. And, I, you know, I haven't been playing dynasty football for 25 years, but I've been playing hardcore for, what, seven, eight years now. And I've got enough teams that cost enough to keep my attention on to put, you know, you're playing – seven, eight, nine, ten teams a year for a lot of money. So you do that times seven. So you got, you know, 40 seasons under your belt of high stakes. It's like, all right, well, I've seen enough a little bit now where it's like, all right, well, you can ride these guys out, but sometimes it just it, – it, it's a slippery slope, you know. So right. I don't, the, the leagues where I have those guys in – I just competed for a championship, and I'm trying to of next course. year too. Who, so who, you know what I mean. You, you got to have a really bad team to have Dalvin and not be in the playoffs. You know, so if you got yourself, you got two or three different playmakers. If you got yourself Dalvin Cook and a Darren Waller, it's hard to miss the playoffs with two guys like that. So you know, it's not fun to trade away the best players. And the and the other part of that thing is is you know. We're pretty sure J.K. Dobbins is a beast, and it really looks like Jonathan Taylor is a beast. They could both have sophomore slumps next year. You you really don't want to just trade that person. You don't want to get the bad player. You don't you don't want to trade down for that mediocre player that had a good you know a good run, he had a good couple weeks, and you're just like, all right, well, I can take him. I can get him in a first for uh, Alvin Kamara. Big Co tell me I need to sell. No, 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 no. You need to really hone in on who you're getting and then those extra pieces to – you're turning back the clock, but at the same time, you're trying to – like I said while Casey was gone, you're trying to maintain as close to those points in your starting lineup as you can. You don't want to take a huge dip. Um, right, so if you want to if you want to sell one of these guys, you need to hit us up on Patreon. we got a Discord channel with a, with a Dynasty Trades specific channel underneath that. Um, it's all on Discord now, baby. We're just Discording it up. It's been a great change fun conversations there's game days there's trades ffpc sit uh, start recraft, sit start all that fun stuff on there Favorite and guys drinks video people, game, people helping people kind of shit people helping people <laughs> but that's you get there, there through patreon but uh all right let's close up shop with this so it's um i think it's important it's kind of the way i break down um startups and and values for everybody going into the season which is i do a lot of mocks and stuff like that to start getting my bearings on um values of guys and that's how i decide i don't ever i don't really hate anybody i hate values on guys and i it's a risk reward thing and i mean i hate um, Keyshawn vaughn but whatever <laughs> Um, but I always look at it as a beginning, a middle, and the end. And, you know, you got your first part of the draft, you got your middle part of the draft, and you got your end. And as I go through the off season, I'm always trying to figure out, all right, these are my end of the tier, end of the draft guys, and these are these block of guys. that These are the guys I always end up with. Here's my middle of the road guys. Here's the block of the guys that I'm always looking for and always trying to get. And then here's my higher end guys. And it all changes a little bit depending on – the risks I took in the top half of the draft, you know, or the middle of the draft, I take a bunch of risky guys that I take, you know, some, some safe guys. I take some old guys that I take some young guys and it all kind of changes and fluctuates as you go through. Um, so I wanted to close up with just some cheaper guys as you were coming off the end of the season, maybe some guys that you guys think none of us have done any mock drafts or anything. So we don't know exactly who's there, but going off some ADP or guys off your head that you think, might be a little and again this will change and it's something that I want to keep with throughout the offseason and keep talking about but like as no narratives have really been created on guys and values so some of these guys will probably say a million times some guys we might not mention again from this uh, specific little segment here and there'll be guys added to the list because the narratives got created and pushed them down further for whatever reason um so you guys got anybody off the rip that you like? A couple of cheaper guys that you'd be targeting at the end of drafts or maybe just trying to put on the end of a, of a deep dynasty roster? So we're talking like deep, like cheap, cheap money? Well, whatever you got. like Maybe like anywhere from the 100th ADP down to 250, you know? 
Yeah, cause even 180p, we're talking what around 10, 12, something like that. So it's not, it's not cheap money, but it's like it's affordable money, I yeah, guess. Not, not affordable <laughs> yeah. money. Uh, hey, any, anywhere from there, like off the rip, I like I liked what Cephas was doing at the end of the year. Well, that's uh, cheap money. That's cheap. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like 183 Cephas right is now. Like on 180. I'm, I was gonna say like Michael Michael Gallup. He's 106 ADP. That's not cheap money, and it might fall too going into the off season. But um, yeah, so you I, might I, have to I like wait another year. From, from Cephas's big ass at the end of the but year, he was looking kind of spry. He looks there, like looking, a tight end, bro. He does. I, I, he's got that 87 or whatever number he's wearing. It just got a tight end number, looking big as fuck. Um, so I liked what Cephas did. Uh, Gus Edwards. Uh, he, he's out of contract. I think he's released the fucking bus Gus and let him get a chance somewhere to be the guy or resign him for another year or two. I think he's a fun stab. Uh, Miles Boykin flashed a couple of times and he could be having another, like if they want to use him properly, like he could kind of be like a Waller in your lineup that, that, yeah, it's, that dude looks big and fast and strong. Boykins is really fast and he's really big. And I, I dumped him off the end of some, you know, medium-sized rosters in the middle of this season. I scooped and him I, up at I one hate, of those I, leagues. I hate that he 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 came. Well, I don't hate. I love that he came out and was catching some some deeper uh, TDs. But um, let's see, Ahmed. We Ahmed. We talked about him a little bit. These are all in the one eighties. Um, Logan Thomas. We talked about him. Uh, Marlon Max, another. He's at two hundred four in ADP right now. Two hundred four I mean, left for dead. What? Where did you? Where's Logan agent. Thomas? Logan Thomas is one fifty nine. That's non premium. I'm. A, I assume. Yeah. Um, but that's. I think. And that. I think that'll come up a little bit as narrative sure. gets created. Um, I think I like people. Logan Thomas. You, got, you. You have to circle back and figure out if they get when the guy's not on your team, who is scoring points. Yeah. And obviously, Logan. I mean, the Redskins' ability to. As from guys that were throwing the ball, sure. their quarterback situation was ridiculous at times this year. Um, but it looked like when, as soon as Alex Smith got in there, he was like, "Hey, watch! This is how you play NFL quarterback. You throw it to this huge man over here who's kind of close enough to you that you can complete it to him." And then, and so, by the way, played a little quarterback, so it probably sees the field a little different than a lot of guys out there. And it's and it looked and it clicked, and all of a sudden. He, Logan Thomas was doing work. Yeah, that's, I think that's a good target. Uh, Ebron, super cheap, st- seems still 173. And if you didn't have Ebron, you don't know. But, I mean, if in premium, he put up strong numbers every week, or most weeks anyway. Um, Nelson Aguilar at 175. He's a free agent. Yeah. Leave the – oh, yeah. Had, yeah a that's nice, nice. had a nice year. Had a nice, uh, nice little year there. Absolutely. I mean, I wish I had a – benched Marvin Jones to play Nelson Aguilar in week 16, but I didn't. An idiot. Uh, Marvin Jones is another guy. He's he's also a free agent. He's at 144. He's 31 years old, or will be. Uh, Still looks like he's got game, though. Absolutely. Tons of it. Just so, when it shows up, he can get on a hot streak, man. He can as, be a heater. As soon as Big Coast said he was through with Marvin Jones selling for a third, he just took off. <laughs> For like the rest of the season, this is like one of the only years he played all sixteen games. Oh, so great! I picked him up in one of my FFPC leaves off the waiver wire. Like the week after, I said I was breaking up with him for cheap, and uh, <laughs> because I was, I, even though I was breaking up with him, like That's he's not going to be yeah. on the waiver wire, Mm-mm. not in my league, and he torched to end the season crushed he did, he did suck in week 16 but that's yeah. it, Matt it's not his fault out. yeah Matt Matt Stafford went out in the first fucking series first what a series. terrible week six and then he goes out week 17 and just murders the whole league mm-hmm. <laughs> him and tyler lockett oh if my you, gosh if you could tell me right now that marvin jones was going to be playing with matt stafford next year i'd i'd make sure he was on all the all my new teams too. I mean, it will be because he's going to be picked in the 150s. So I'm taking Marvin Jones just because. Yeah, but yeah. I uh, mean, if we're going to talk about a 30 year old receiver, we've already scrolled up. Cole Beasley's down there at 160. Cole? Oh, I mean, everybody knows we're already okay, we're smitten okay. with Cole. We're smitten. King Cole, smitten. Getting to the f- bread like food trucks. Making moves <laughs> like food trucks. Getting to the bread, it's chewed up. There we go. Throw a couple more guys out there. Herndon, 267. We talked about the Jets and their trajectory. Strong. Once Case is out of there. He, he finished the season a little strong. Caught a couple touchdowns there at the end. Uh, Jeff Wilson, Jr., 225 right now. Um, 
looks when he's out there, he looks good. I mean, I mean, know it's the Niners, and I'd love to Catching see them balls. get like a ridiculous running back there. But uh, Dan Arnold, just so see so if you got a super deep uh, team there. Seems like he was kind of coming on, and, and Kyler and him were kind of developing a little bit of chemistry. He's basically a fucking wide receiver out there, which I think. Um, a couple of these guys that I've named already are tight ends. Irv Smith's on here, 122. Uh, Ertz is on here, 123. Like, oh, Ertz, got to get some Ertz. Yeah, I mean, 122. The tight end position right now, are, are, uh, they're some of my favorite players to kind of stash on and, and, and stab on. I, I think uh, they're disregarded a lot in drafts, usually the pretty cheap. Stab and stash. Um, yeah, and, and the tight end position, and I think – the way that they're used is on the up right now. I think it's becoming one of the best mismatches on the field for the smart teams that know how to use it and manage it. Like it doesn't no even need to necessarily be a tight end. He just needs to be that bigger body dude who's athletic. And we've seen it a couple times in the league here and a couple other guys are going to catch on to this and find the right guys. Um, and I, I, like I said, I just think it's one of the better mismatches that goes on on the field right now. Like you can't guard Darren Waller. You can't guard Kelsey. Obviously the chiefs are a whole different bear. Um, but I think I think it's kind of coming, which I like those kind of hyper. Like, I love Kyle Pitts. I'm going to do everything I can to get him on so many teams this year. He's just a receiver playing the tight end position coming out of Florida there. Florida. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Dawson Knox is on there. They're just an offense that has a lot of firepower moving forward. He's a pretty athletic dude. Um, yeah, Irv Smith. I, I would. He, he, he's When he got fed a couple times this season, he looked really strong. Ertz is super cheap, 123. Um, I'd stash uh, Drew Sample. He was getting peppered Sample. for periods with with Joe Burrow. He was a high pick. We talked about Keyshawn Vaughn, one fifty five. I think he's going to get some burn next year. I think he'll get in the tree of trust. I think, and it was never that he wasn't a good player. It's just that he was a young or older young player and didn't have an off season. And Tommy and them are going to. He's a trash sandwich. <laughs> and um, I like I like the idea of stabbing on Vaughn. Um, who else? Uh, we talked a little bit about David Johnson, 132. I'd be buying up some David Johnson. Obviously, if you're not like a team that's putting together uh, a mediocre roster that's not really in shape to win, but like if I'm building the team the first year in the draft, nine times out of ten, I'm not doing the productive struggle and I'm going to win. And I think David Johnson could be a nice little key stuck in Texas in Tex- with the Texans for one more year. Dude, if you get David Johnson in the 11th round, Bo, you yeah. got to. Got to. And I, I, we were, I was talking to Jay Wayne beforehand, and it was just like, were all these running backs this year that were all the Connors, Levs, David Johnsons, uh, four, Melvin, five, six, all those round guys, guys that were four, five, six rounds are going to drop down to the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh round kind of guys, and not like it's going to be a fun year to be able to kind of build a back end of the roster with some of these older running backs that are going to have good stretches and and good seasons, right? Because yeah, and Gordon could easily have a good year. Um. Yeah, you, Carton, you, he's a free agent. What's going to happen with him? James Connors a free agent. Benny Snell. Benny, I, I'd be taking a little stab on Anthony McFarlane if we're talking cheap, cheap cuts. That guy's flashed a little bit. He didn't do. Yeah, he's much. probably free, and he's probably in the two hundreds. No, nah, he's he's not. He's in like one. No? Uh, I had him down here. One uh, interesante. Still taking my guy DeVernay at 177. I know he's on the Ravens, but I just on a deeper bench, I'm just going to draft the talent guys and stash them away and just leave them there for a while. I think there's a lot of talent there. Was it 178? Sorry, Biko, I think I cut you off. What were you 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 trying to say? Buying those running backs in the 10th and 11th round, you ain't paying much for them. Mm Mm-mm. Uh, yeah, Gallman. Gallman's at like 193 right now. He's a free agent. He's shown that if you give him the rock, he could be – Semi-competent, you know. Lane train, baby. Didn't, didn't look absolutely awful. And if you're going to tell me in the on my 200th pick, I could take a guy that that uh, like that that I've seen play decent at the position. I, I'm not opposed. Can I get my two star review back for Wayne Gallman already? <laughs> yeah, we got a two star review on the Wayne Gallman rookie draft because we took him in like the end of the second round or third yeah. round or something. And that was our Wayne Gallman two star review. We were mad. I was heated. Robbie Anderson checks in at 85. Interesting. So oh, Rob, of a 60, Robbie's a good buy. He never 12, gets any respect. Um, I think Preston Williams is a, a more expensive kind of cheaper dude. Pre- Paris Campbell, you know, those are all in the low 100s. Those are guys yeah. that 
I'd be trying to get a piece of Curtis Samuel. If someone's sleeping on him, I'd be down to pay some for, for Curtis Samuel. I think it's him approximately, and, sorry, good day. Him and Paris. Let me get some. Oh, yeah. What you got, Rico? Approximately the eighth, the first pick in the eighth round. Approximately is Robbie Anderson. Sign me up. Told y'all boys last year I scooped him up everywhere for a third. Yeah, BMI though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we'll dig a little deeper into this coming up. What, what about uh, Cortland Sutton? You think he'll be a little cheaper next year coming off the injury? And People love uh, Judy. They also hate the Broncos. Drew Locke sucks. Their mm -hmm. coaching staff's probably... Do they still got Vic Vangio? Do he, he still yeah, have no. a job? Vangio's coming back. Always giving up power it seems like he's trying to find somebody else to run the ship yeah Sutton dropped down to 62 on average if you're not familiar with ADP on uh, DLF um, yeah I mean this is, it comes down to anytime a player every year. comes off of an injury they're cheaper the next year pretty much so Mixon, Cortland Sutton go get you some of those guys alright fellas well had a good time talking with you. Been a, been a minute. Had a good time. We're uh, we got Angelo fan, fantasy Angelo fantasy FF in the works there. Maybe the end of January looking like. So he's going to come on and probably kick off our uh, prospect talk. Rookie talk. Rookie talk. Rookie talk. Rookie talk. Rookie talk. Like I said, we'll be doing some mocks here uh, relatively soon, and and more kind of breaking down top tier guys that we like medium tier guys and end of tier guys as, as the season goes on and about to start looking at some tape for some guys. So we'll see you next time. Did you guys enjoy today? Was it, was it, was it okay? It's been a while. It's been a while. I was, I was good. I was looking forward to it. I was yeah. needing this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, anytime we get on the mics, even though 2021 sucks, still fun to get on the mics. Shout out to Dr. Dre. Yeah, well, see you later. look at what's what's wrong with Dr. Dre. Is everything okay? Brain aneurysm. Oh shit. Yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah, so look at we brought it back around. We started with Dre. We didn't that's what you call a tease. We, we made you get all the way through to, to figure out what happened to Dr. Dre. What causes brain aneurysm? I don't know if anybody knows. Money? He, he's in the middle of a divorce, so I guess that could <laughs> he, he does have too much money for a divorce, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Damn. What a stud that guy is. Said he has a prenup, but she, she said that he ripped the prenup up a long time ago, and he's like, nah, I didn't rip the prenup up. <laughs> that was a different piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> he sold he sold uh he sold the apple. The beats, so. yeah. All right, boys, I'm out. I'll see y'all next time. Peace. Peace. <laughs>